Hello Internet, and welcome to a new series on this channel that I'm going to be calling Curious Reviews, where I play small or interesting indie games and tell you what I think about them. This morning I was playing Panarium, a game that my girlfriend made me play for her own sadistic amusement. And sadistic is possibly the operative word that I would use to describe this game. Panarium is a game of many things. It is a game about being a farmer. It's a game about being kidnapped by a creepy old man who runs a circus. And ultimately, it's a game of dancing around on a platform for said creepy old man, who's definitely not making you work as some kind of bizarre death stripper, and trying to not die while hoping that there might be some food at the end of the day. The mechanics of the game are, you know, fairly simple. You just uh, have to survive. Um, any of you who have played some of the very old kind of Super Mario Brothers games will be kind of fairly familiar with the gameplay. You jump between platforms and dodge uh, anything from explosives to pet dragons. And sometimes you have particular things to collect. Uh, there is a game mode where you have to collect barrels. Well, um, I say game mode. The challenges um, actually alternate during the campaign. Fundamentally... The game is built in a series of simple stages where you have a selection of platforms you can jump between. The controls are very simple. Pretty much all you can do is run and double jump. And there are a multiple different challenges as I've mentioned. Sometimes you have to collect barrels. Sometimes you have to um, come into contact with balloons. And sometimes you just have to survive and... Um, come into contact with a spotlight until a timer reaches zero. Each mission is very short. It usually takes about a minute to a minute 30 to complete one of them at maximum. It's an incredibly hard game and I cannot stress this enough. You will die and you will die and you will die and then maybe you'll make a tiny bit of progress and then you'll die another 50 times. It's a game where... It's not even unrealistic to get the achievement for 50 deaths before you complete the tutorial. I just managed to scrape by um, that, however my girlfriend didn't and she's very resentful of me for <laughs> completing the game with the, the tutorial without dying that many times. But yes, it's, it's very, very tough. And it's very, very simple in the end. It's just these stages. There's also an arcade mode, which you can play it's mostly just for practice as far as i'm aware i i don't think it has any effect on the campaign mode um its mo main purpose is just for practice and for fun essentially where you play in a situation where you collect barrels and each barrel drops a couple of coins and you get the coins and every couple of barrels you get it gets a little bit harder and the traps change and after, if you earn enough coins after you die you can go to a shop and you can spend those coins on getting new kind of power-ups that activate sometimes during the level, depending on how many coins you've collected. And now, it, originally I thought maybe that might be something that affects the campaign of the game, but on closer inspection, it appears to not actually affect the, the main campaign mode at all. Um, so the campaign mode is separate. Each campaign area um, seems to be split up between maybe 10 or 20 different levels which you have to complete in order um so there's not much to take you out of the main action if you're finding it frustrating which is perhaps the only downside to say about the game is that it's very simple um you basically just have these levels you to complete and there's not much else to do apart from maybe practice in the arcade or maybe play multiplayer if you're getting stuck and I don't know how long it is, I haven't actually completed it, but I don't think it's actually all that long. Looking at the world map, it looks like perhaps three um, kind of main campaign areas. There is a storyline in the game uh, that plays out in cutscenes between challenge areas, kind of at the start of each area. And in the beginning of each level, there's kind of the campaign, sorry, the, sorry, the circus uh, or kind of director will turn up and taunt you a little bit and that's one of part of where the game shines is just in the little areas like the art style is um kind of very quirky 
the audio, it's got very excellent music and sound effects. It kind of puts me in mind of Tim Burton films somehow. Um, maybe you'll understand that when you play it. I, it's just got that kind of art noir kind of feel. And the dialogue is, it, there's not much of it, but it's very snappily written. And it's kind of nice and quirky and witty. So I do think as a game, it, uh, it stands up, it's fun, it's very, very simple. Um, it's not a game to play if you do not have a particular interest in very tough platforming games. But if that's what you want, if you want a tough platforming game, say you've been playing Super Meat Boy or something, and you want something else, um, then I would say give it a go. It's a, it's a lot of fun. One thing is its, it's price tag is currently $8.99 on Steam. Um, I don't know if it's available anywhere else, but it's $8.99 on Steam. And that, I would say, is perhaps a little bit of a high price tag. Um, so maybe try and find it on a sale. But if you're a lover of platform games, then I can't imagine you doing too badly by buying this game. So if um, €8.99 sounds like the right kind of price tag for a couple of hours of platforming fun for you, or if you find it on a deal, I would definitely grab this game. In any case, that's my review. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll be making more videos like this in the future. See you later, Internet.